What up, big dogs? I apologize if I plug this into way too many videos this week, but it is an announcement that I need to make. We are hiring a full stack web developer. If you don't give a shit about that, fantastic. You can skip to this time. Tony, please link whenever the actual video itself starts. But remember, it's rude to skip introductions. We are hiring a full stack web developer for BDG. E. So if you are a full stack web developer and you are in the fantasy space, if you're familiar with BDGE and the brand, that is where we will be looking to hire first from within. Please contact info at bigdogsfantasy.com. We are looking for someone with real experience, okay? So I'm sorry we're not taking anybody from college. We're not taking anybody that does not actually have experience doing full stack web development work. You will be helping maintain, improve, innovate on our membership website, bdge.store. You will be helping create many new tools such as a dynasty trade calculator. You will be working on e-commerce stuff. You will be working on WordPress and the plugins. You will be working on all the nightmarish things like catch problem, cash problems, however the fuck you say it. And you will be working with us in our office in New York City, which will be coming early 2022. So if you are a full stack web developer and you think you have what it takes and you're good and you have experience and you want to work with us for us, please reach out. Info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Now bike to your regularly scheduled film. These are the five wide receiver groups that have the worst fantasy playoff schedules this year. If you have these wide receiver groups on your team, you will not be clapped up like me. You will not be slinging hardware around when weeks 14, 15, 16, 17 come. All right. We did these videos yesterday with the running back. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, you miss those. And what you should do is two things. Subscribe, throw the D in the subscribe. Go back to yesterday. I will link both the videos in the description as well for the best fantasy playoff schedules for running backs, as well as the worst today in both of these videos. This one's dropping at 5 a.m. Eastern time, so y'all are up bright and early. Let's go. Wide receivers, worst schedule later today. Wide receivers, best schedule for the fantasy playoffs. I'm ready to roll, so without further ado, we're going to tuck our shirts in. We're going to stop yelling. We're going to eat. First off, I'd like to apologize for yesterday's video's audio. For some reason, it picked up my laptop's microphone instead of this beautiful stick in front of my mouth right now. If it happens again in these videos, I have no one to blame except fake intern Tony. So you could yell at him in the comments if the audio's shot again. What else is shot is the Atlanta Falcons wide receiver playoff schedule. Now, I'm just listing them up and raking them down for you. There aren't a lot of wide receivers on the Falcons that are fantasy relevant regardless, okay? I'm just choosing the teams that I saw with the worst playoff schedules and delivering it to you, and this is in no particular order. I just scanned down. Maybe it's in alphabetical order. I don't know, but the Falcons, they play at Carolina. They play at San Francisco. They play against Detroit, and they play at Buffalo from weeks 14 through 17. Again, most people's championships are going to be in week 17 because this is an 18-week season. Fantasy points per game rank against the wide receiver. So 27th for Carolina means they allow the 27th most points to fantasy wide receivers. Carolina has been very, very good on defense. Their defense has been wildly improved year over year. They're one of the best all-around defenses in the NFL. San Francisco has been tightening up like a fucking loose. We're not going to go there. Detroit, 21. This is one of those situations where most teams just run and run and run and run against Detroit. So they're a good play. They're a good matchup for running backs. The game script usually goes that way and teams tend to just dominate the run game against Detroit. They don't pass a lot. So this is probably more of a volume thing. At Buffalo, it doesn't get much more difficult than that. You know, at that point in the season, it's going to be fucking freezing in Buffalo. You think these dudes out in Atlanta uh, are ready for that? Absolutely not. Against one of the toughest pass defenses in the NFL. So if Ridley's back, even then it's going to be an impossibly difficult matchup against Tredavious White. Moving down the list, the Denver Broncos. We talked about in yesterday's video how Javonta Williams and or Melvin Gordon both have juicy fucking playoff schedules for the running back position. On the flip side, most of those teams are run funnel defenses, right? We emphasized that in yesterday's video. They're run funnel defenses, which means they're very good against the past. You have starting right away. This is a brutal schedule starting from this week for the Denver Broncos and the passing game and the wide receiver group. You have the Chargers this week, Kansas City, Detroit, Cincinnati, Las Vegas, and the Chargers again. So that playoff schedule right there of weeks 16 and 17, both games on the road against Las Vegas, against the Chargers. Both teams have fucking 
wicked pass rushes as well as really good coverage. They play the Chargers this week. Okay, so the three in in the middle, while you don't think of them as like ferocious defenses against wide receivers for fantasy, they've been good one way or another. KC is bottom 10. Cincinnati is bottom 10. Detroit is number 21. So just looking at that raw schedule, there is no easy matchups there for the Denver Broncos and the wide receiver group there. And it's already a tough wide receiver group to get a gauge for, you know, who should I be starting week in and week out? Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, and you have Noah Fant. And you have, you know, all these guys where it's like tough to figure out who are we putting in? Who is the fucking chain gang this week for that team? At this point, I don't know if we're going to get any chain gang fucking games out of these te- out of these guys with this schedule. So Denver Broncos, you want a piece of the running game. You don't want a piece of the passing game in the fantasy playoffs indianapolis colts again there are four teams on by in week 14 i believe it's the new england patriots the miami dolphins it is the indianapolis colts and it is the philadelphia eagles so week 14 if you're in one of those leagues where you do two weeks per playoff matchup that's gonna fuck you that's gonna fuck you like johnny sins all right week 14 is gonna be a problem so the colts you have a buy in week 14 then you're against new england who's always one of the toughest pass defenses you're at arizona and you're against Las Vegas, three brutal matchups after you have a bye, man. So like as much as you love Michael Pittman, as much as Carson Wentz has been, you know, a comeback player, one of the probably comeback players of the year candidates. I don't know if it ends pretty for him, man. I really, really don't. So Indianapolis, clear as day, they've got a brutal schedule. All right. Brutal schedule, brutal sleep schedule. A lot of y'all are on that. I'm on it. I was on it before. Felix Gray entered my life. Now, Felix Gray, for those of y'all that are new to the company, to the brand, let me tuck tuck my chains in so y'all stop getting distracted by these fucking genuine 62 carat. That shit looks tough. Y'all wouldn't want to see me at linebacker. Felix Gray, they're blue light blockers. It's a buzzword being thrown around a lot. Blue light means it protects you from the blue light that comes off your screens, computers, monitors, camera screens, cell phone screens. If you watch Netflix at night before you go to sleep, if you're on your cell phone right in your face before you go to sleep, it kills the quality of your sleep, okay? It absolutely diminishes the quality of your sleep. It does not let your body produce melatonin because the blue light says, hey, we're still awake. We want you to produce energy. We don't want you to start producing melatonin so you can fall asleep, all right? So Felix Gray has these blue light blockers that look good too. They make you look smarter. They make you look suave. They make you look sophisticated. They don't have big orange lenses like most other companies' blue light blocking glasses. So you look good. You're going to feel good. You're going to sleep good. And guess what? You're getting a good fucking price because during their their Black Friday sale, which is for like the next week, when you use the link down below, it's going to take you to a promo code page where you're going to be able to use the code everything 15 for 15% off your entire purchase. All right. So felixgray.com, the link down below will take you right to the promo code page. You're going to use promo code everything 15 for 15% off your Felix Gray purchase. These, this style, the very, very like simple minimalistic style, I believe is the hopper style, but they've got a bunch of them. If you're a prescription, this is perfect as well because they do prescription with blue light. All right. We're going to kill 17 birds with one stone. We're killing one neck with 13 chains. Chain gang, we bike out. Yeah, so felixray.com. Go check out the link in the description. Everything 15 for 15% off everything. It wasn't too difficult to figure out, all right? But what is difficult is the Washington football team schedule for the rest of the year. Starting week 13, again, at Las Vegas. You know, you don't think, I've mentioned them, they've been in a lot of these playoff schedules, but you don't think of them as a great pass defense or just a great defense in general, but their pass rush, you know, Max Crosby and guys like that, have made it so difficult for teams to pass against them and and just be successful against them on the flip side of things when they're passing the ball. They get Las Vegas. They get Dallas, Philly, Dallas, Philly. Dallas, Philly, Dallas, Philly. So Philly, up to this point, has been the third most difficult schedule for fantasy wide receiver. Also not something you probably thought about prior to this video. I didn't think Philly was that good against the pass, but lo and behold, third toughest fantasy schedule for wide receivers. Then they play Dallas, who is middle of the pack. And why I think this needs to be noticed or noticeable, one, Dallas has a great pass rush. So if you don't have a good offensive line, Dallas's D-line is going to be a problem for you, uh, spearheaded by, obviously, the ultra-talented rookie, Mika Parsons. The other thing to note is that the Dallas pass defense is, you know, led by Trayvon Diggs, who is an a a talented, a standout corner. And a lot of people are going to be like, he's a risk reward guy. He makes a lot of good plays. He makes a lot of bad plays, but he's going to be shadowing most likely Terry McLaurin because Washington only has Terry McLaurin in the passing game. So when you have one really good cornerback, one really good wide receiver, he's going to see most of them. And yes, Trayvon Diggs can be inconsistent, but everyone said the same thing about like Marcus. Most guys come in 
When the cornerback is young, they're inconsistent because they haven't got their foot in the fucking ground yet. They don't know the right things to do all the time. But you see the talent rise above that and they make unbelievable plays. Usually that career path line leads to being an elite cornerback. And he's pretty fucking elite already by every measurable statistic. I expect to see a lot of Trayvon Diggs. Reminds me a lot of Marcus Peters. A lot of Trayvon Diggs to Terry McLaurin. So you're looking at Vegas. Dallas twice, who are the least the, the least highest ranked of this group, but not a good matchup for Washington because of the personnel. And then Philly, who's bottom three. So tough matchup right there. We move to the Kansas City Chiefs, who doesn't really, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to say it actually matters because, I mean, there's no fucking way in hell you're sitting Tyreek Hill. There's no way you're, you're sitting a guy like Travis Kelsey. And there's no way you're sitting Patrick Mahomes, realistically. But I thought I'd put them on here because they got LV. They've got the Chargers, uh, Pittsburgh, who, of course, is not like a team that you really would love to play against, right? Especially come playoff time because they have a, a sick fucking pass rush, of course, which could always lead to problems for wide receivers in fantasy. Uh, but they're the lowest ranked of this. They're the 11th most generous team to fantasy points for wide receivers. Cincinnati also down there, uh, an underrated defense, 23rd there. So tough schedule for Kansas City. Not one that you're necessarily like shying away from just because of the personnel when it comes to Kansas City. Just not a team that you're going to be sitting any of the top players. You're obviously not starting Michael Hartman. You're not starting Pringle or any guys like that. But you start your studs. I think it's just worth noting at this point. And those are the five, five wide receiver groups with the worst fantasy playoff schedules for 2021 fantasy football. That's going to be a wrap. We're going to do the five best or probably the three best because there weren't that many great, great schedules for fantasy wide receivers, to be honest with you, to be quite frank with you. All right, that'll wrap it up. Uh, make sure you go check out Felix Gray. Link will be in the description. If you're a full stack web developer, hit us up. Info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Subscribe to the channel. Throw us a like down below on the video, and I will see y'all in a few hours on the best wide receiver schedule video. Bye.